The Atlantic tropics are heating up. I'm Mike Naso with this Monday evening update on the tropics. Obviously, this is the hurricane name list, as I'm sure you've seen before. We have gone through Arthur, Bertha, Cristobal, all the way through Josephine and Kyle. And our next storm name is Laura and then Marco. And we may have Laura and Marco with our features that we have out here in just the next couple of days. Here's the Atlantic Basin tonight, and we have two areas of interest. Remember, when they get named uh, before a depression, it's an invest. And in the Atlantic, we number them 90 to 99, and then we rotate. So this is Invest 97, moving through the southern windwards, and it's looking a little bit more interesting this evening. And this is expected to continue generally west-northwest in the Caribbean Sea and could be a problem down the road. Uh, of greater concern, to be honest, is Invest 98, which is looking much better organized. And this one could actually be Laura before the one over here, which is the opposite of what we were thinking the other day. And uh, whichever one becomes Laura or Marco, if they do, or if they both do, uh, this one here could be the much bigger threat taking a track in the general vicinity of the Greater Antilles. Now, let's look at what the Hurricane Center is saying. This is as of 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, the first system in the Caribbean has a 60% chance in the next five days, and uh, it's moving fast, and it's 20 miles an hour west, so that's going to kind of limit the development. However, as they mentioned, upper-level winds could be favorable when it gets over here somewhere in the northwest Caribbean, and the waters are so hot, unbelievably hot. Our second feature is Code Red. This is a 90% chance, so almost certain, and it is getting better organized, and it has increasing banding features near the center, and a depression is likely to form probably by tomorrow. We could have a tropical storm. So even though we were thinking that Laura would be uh, the system here in the Caribbean, you know, it's closest to home, whatever, uh, the one out in the Atlantic, that could be what we deal with uh, first and foremost as Laura. And this could be a real threat down the road for the islands, Puerto Rico, the Bahamas, and even the United States. I'll talk about that and the possibilities momentarily. All right, here's the infrared satellite imagery, and this gives you a good idea of our two systems. I'm not seeing a spin yet with uh, 97L uh, entering the uh, Caribbean, but definitely probably some gusty winds and rainy night tonight in the uh, Windward Islands, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Barbados, you guys are probably getting a lot of moisture. We just had a pretty good rain squall move through uh, Trinidad and Tobago. However, uh, this system is the one that is showing the banding features near what we believe is a developing center somewhere in this general area. And the thinking is, is that over the next one, two, three days, that's going to develop and move in the general direction of the Virgin Islands and from there maybe near or north of Puerto Rico. And that is a serious hurricane track. We don't like that. That's the Francis track. That's the Irma track. That's the Donna track. Uh, that's the Floyd track. Some historical hurricanes have taken that dreaded track, and that's why this one is very concerning tonight. Now here's the GFS models. These are the 18Z. The GFS has been acting weird all year. We don't know if it's not enough airplanes flying because of the virus. We don't know if it's just run its course. Uh, but that, that acronym, GFS, has been used in derogatory ways this year because it's really been lacking as far as when a system is going to form or where it's going to go. But it takes our system generally directly over the Greater Antilles. Remember Hurricane George in 98? The islands, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, Cuba, the Keys, and then the Gulf Coast. Now, the only good news with that would be it would keep it over land so it wouldn't strengthen as much. However, the rainfall and the flood threat would be horrible. And again, it could be further to the north, further to the south. Either way, a lot of them have it as a hurricane close to the Florida. And that's the GFS Ensemble. Now, the scariest one is the European because I put more stock in the European. You can see it takes our system here and doesn't do a whole lot with it until maybe the Bay of Campeche here, Gulf of Mexico. There's always the chance that it kind of hits the Yucatan and then spits out towards Texas. However, the system out here in the Atlantic, as mentioned, it takes it on that dreaded seductive curve right up in the general direction of Florida and the Bahamas. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, Mike, Mike, look at there, all the tracks offshore. 
I mean, come on, this thing could still turn out to sea. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's a long way out. You're talking seven to ten days. But there are a lot of tracks going into the Gulf, Florida, Cuba, the Keys, not to mention the Bahamas, which, I mean, good God, they've had so many hurricanes. I mean, Hurricane Asias earlier this year, Hurricane Dorian last year. Uh, they've been slammed. They don't need it. And then you see a track like this one here where it's just right over the Bahamas into southeast Florida, another one right up into uh, Key Biscayne, one offshore Hatteras. The possibilities are scary with this storm. And we are now in the, the heart of the season, you know, the, the end of August. And this could be the first major hurricane of the year, to be honest with you, if it does develop. And it may develop. The hurricane centers say a 90% chance, and this seductive snake track like that worries me. Don't ask me why I call it that. I just, a, a, a slithering track, a snake-like track under that ridge of high pressure. Here's the Canadian model, and this was the 12Z. It takes our first system towards Texas, but a much more powerful system, a hurricane, slamming into the panhandle. This is on the 26th. This is nine days from now. And the Canadians been very consistent with this idea of twin storms in the Gulf. I don't know how that would work because this bigger hurricane would most likely shear uh, our system or the weaker one would shear our hurricane. So there'd be some sort of interaction. I have a feeling that this would probably be inland in Mexico and our hurricane here would be the bigger feature. But again, that's just the Canadian model. But I've been impressed with the Canadian model. It gets put down a lot, but... Uh, the Canadian and the Euro have been doing way better than the GFS this year. I'll tell you guys that. Wind shear is uh, becoming much more favorable than it was about a week or so ago when I showed you. Look at this little anti-cyclone right over our system moving into the Caribbean. If it carries this along over those hot waters, it will develop. And then we have another little safe harbor over our developing system in the Atlantic. So... The wind shear for both of these systems should be favorable, and obviously the waters are very hot. So we're going to watch this very carefully over the next couple of days, but the next two names are Laura and Marco, and right now the bigger threat appears to be the one developing quicker out in the Atlantic, so that could be Laura before this system in the Caribbean. But we'll wait and see if uh, either one develops, but right now I think they both could. What am I looking at here? Ah! Out in the Pacific, Hurricane Genevieve. I told you there was going to be a hurricane off Mexico. We have one. It's up to 100 miles an hour. It's at 16.0 north, 105.3 west. It's sailing west-northwest at 18. That's as of 7 p.m. Central Time. And because these tropical storm force winds extend out, we do have tropical storm watches there for the Baja right there of Mexico because as the system pulls away paralleling the coast, it could get close enough and clip areas of the Baja with tropical storm winds. You can see that even better. It is forecast, by the way, to become a 140 mile per hour category four, a very severe hurricane. But if it stays offshore, number one, those waters get cooler. Number two, it probably will be weakening and the hurricane winds will likely remain offshore. But this area of tropical storm winds will likely hit the Baja in a couple of days. And uh, that would be by, uh, let's say, Wednesday or so, probably. So you guys would have to be uh, ready for that. Right now, the satellite imagery of Genevieve shows a very impressive, rapidly deepening hurricane. Where I put the red dot, that's the well-defined pinhole eye. And look at it coiling like a snake there, with good outflow in all quadrants, evacuating that air. Fausto was out here, barely lasted as a tropical storm, but Genevieve is the big one and it's going to parallel the Mexican coastline. So that'll do it for the tropics this time. I'm Mike Nasal. We're going to keep an eye on our systems. Our two threats in the Atlantic. Right now our wave moving through the southern Caribbean islands, and the much uh, more serious threat it looks like is this wave out developing in the central Atlantic. Both of these likely to move in the direction of land and develop. So we'll be keeping an eye on that over the next couple of days. I'm Mike Nasal with the latest on the tropics. I will see you guys next time.